In this heightened environment, there's no question we're seeing an increase in reported threats, and we've got to be on the lookout, especially for loan actors who may take inspiration from recent events to commit violence of their own. Wow. That sounds pretty serious. Man, and let's just, let's think for a minute. Here on the American soil, how many of these jihadis have, how many Americans have been killed on American soil by jihadis in just the last month? Well, none, uh, not that they're not a threat, none, but how many Americans have been killed by the FBI, right-wingers, in the last month, last couple months? Huh, more than that. Joining me now, my friend Dave Rubin, host of the Rubin Report. Dave, I don't want to dismiss the threat of radical Islamic terrorism. Obviously, it's very real, and obviously it's here. I do find it interesting that I'm being warned about it from the organization that has declared war on me and my values for years now. It's so psychotic. I mean, I feel like we're in a horrific sci-fi movie. The, you know, like the simulation is real and we're in the middle of it right now. Does Christopher Ray know who the president of the United States is, who's in charge of the border? <laughs> that has that has been wide open. It's his boss. It's been wide open. We've you've played the videos. I've played the videos. People just wandering through border guards opening doors for people. Then they occasionally close the door. Wait a few minutes. Come on in. We have no idea who these freaking people are. And uh, you know, Jesse, the really scary part of this is we are now learning that Hamas had this this plan. Uh, on what they did to to Israel for about two years in the making. Well, Biden's been president for over two years. So we've had, in essence, an open border for over two years. Do you think it's possible that perhaps they also sent some people to Mexico to get in our borders? So now, Christopher Ray, because they probably realize, they probably have some level of intel going, oh man, we might've really screwed this thing up. It wasn't just Mexican migrants who wanted to pick oranges. It might be some bad dudes. Uh, he, now he's going, well, if you see something, say something. Of course, if you see something, something to say something then they'll call you racist if you're wrong so the whole thing on top of what you're pointing out about how they basically turn the agencies against the good people of america yeah it's just nuts dave all right let's let's talk about israel hamas hezbollah at the moment obviously it's a gigantic mess and if you can say anything positive about this disaster which is really hard to say it's that at least some Americans appear to be waking up about how much of a problem we have here domestically with people who are not, not friends of yours and mine, Dave. The only silver lining you can come up with so far is that watching, you know, if, if you've seen even The View, I mean, how often is it that I can say something yeah. pleasant about The View? <laughs> but even on The View, these wackadoodle leftists who are wrong about everything, I'm talking about Joy Behar and Anna Navarro and Alyssa Farah, who pretends to be a conservative, but she's a leftist too, they actually are waking up. So, you know, one of the things they always say, you know, uh, a conservative is just a liberal who's mugged by reality. I think that's what's happening right now. I think a lot of the people who ushered in this crazy leftism, you know, boys or girls, America's fundamentally and foundational principles are racist, all of that stuff. They're finally seeing the end result of what they have brought upon us. And the end result is that you would have literally uh, raped women and butchered babies and, and a lot of things that are just too un unspeakable to even get into really, but, but people should witness them because uh, it's so horrific and we have to know what's going on, that finally this has pushed some of the wacky leftists back, let's say, towards the center a little bit. Now, I have no doubt that most of them will fail one way or another when it gets too hot in the kitchen. But if this is a chance for those of us who are fighting for freedom and decency to welcome some of these people back to planet Earth, we got to try. But the apology ain't coming. Yeah, Jesse, but... don't, hang, don't hang for an apology because it ain't coming. Well, I'm not holding out for one of those. Why didn't you fail? You used to be over there. And you, you woke up, but you they're going to fail. I have no doubt you're right about that. You didn't. Why? You know, I don't know. I don't. I truly don't know the answer to that. Other than when I was waking up from leftism, I started chatting with a whole bunch of people. But it wasn't just chatting with them on my show. So you know, I had Larry Elder on, who who woke me up on certain race things. I talked to Ben Shapiro. I talked to Glenn Beck. I talked to Jordan Peterson. You know, all of these guys. But it wasn't just the ideas. It was that they they could explain their ideas in a very calm manner. And even if I had some differences, there was a mutual respect. But I will tell you, I think it, if it was one thing that I can pinpoint more than just the policies. It's that I found and have consistently found 
conservative leaning people are generally nicer. They are kinder, they are more open, believe it or not. You know, liberals pride themselves on openness. You can be so open, your brain will fall out of your head. But it's conservatives actually who are more live and let live, who go, oh, you think that, that's okay, I can still break bread with you. So for whatever differences I have had with some of these guys, when I've debated the death penalty with Dennis Prager, or when I've debated abortion with Ben Shapiro, now I've I've come closer to their positions on those things over the years, but when I would do those things, I would then have dinner with them or spend a year on tour with Jordan Peterson. And and I found, wow, these guys, they're generous of spirit, they're kind. And, uh, I, and where is that grace on the other side? And by the way, Jesse, uh, Anna Navarro and uh, Alyssa Farah, and by the way, Whoopi and Joy, the more they go to sanity, the more hate they are going to get from the people that they taught how to hate. I mean, that's the irony here. But and, and again, that's why we have to show a little grace as it's happening. I played the clips of them today, and I, I was really trying to be like, okay, you guys see a little something now, so I want to be I want to be kid gloves with that because you want to get those people. And and you know, in America, there aren't many people who are who could vote either way anymore, right? We got we got the hardcore right, we got the hardcore left. One constituency that could break, and I think it, 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 you can see it happening to some degree is the same liberal who used to be the JFK liberal of the 60s, you know, the true liberal, they still exist, they've just been cowed into silence. They, they might have a moment right now, I, I, I certainly hope so. Dave, Scott Pelley of 60 Minutes, who's an idiot, but he sat down with Joe Biden and there, were, there was a lot pretty revealing about the whole thing. Maybe, maybe the most revealing and scariest part was this little tidbit as we spoke to the president, his secretary of state was in Israel. His defense secretary was at a NATO meeting on Ukraine. America's oldest president seemed tired from directing all of this. He does seem tired, Dave, and that's kind of a big deal with world affairs being as they are. I, 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 look, I'm not here to say we're going into World War III tomorrow. That's ridiculous and dramatic. But you could see how world affairs could get us there really quickly. And the president of the United States of America poops his pants in front of the Pope. No. <laughs> Right. I think that literally happened, right? Uh, he also fell up the stairs again earlier in the week. Like, I mean, it's, uh -huh. it's a real problem. Look, we know it's a problem. They know it's a problem, but they are just trying to drag the guy over the finish line because the Democrat Party, the bench is so, there's another time he fell up this. I mean, most people fall down the stairs. I kind of admire the guy for always falling up the stairs. But <laughs> uh, the, the, look, the real, the real issue here is that they don't, they have a very thin bench. They're pushing this guy. But Jesse, think about it this way. In, in the business that we're in, and we're both... Uh, I'm, I'm 47. I think I'm a little older than you, if I'm not mistaken. How old are you? Much older. I'm 42. Much older, Dave. You're, you're older at 42. I don't know how... You're taller. I know that much. But the point is, you know, <laughs> doing this for a living and having to churn through the news every day and all that, sometimes it's the end of the day and, and you're fried. You're beat. It's emotional. It's tough. And I'm not comparing... There are people that do way more tough things than us, our, our military, our police, blah, blah, blah. But, but the way I would relate that to somebody like Biden... The guy's clearly not at the top of his game, basically at 80 years old. He's, I'd say, about 75% degraded, degraded from where he once was. This is a huge problem. And if anyone, and, and the thing is, nobody believes he's in charge. I don't know who's in charge, but there is nobody that thinks that this guy is in charge. And when the world seems to be going to hell in a handbasket, uh, that, that does seem like, uh, as the kids would say, problematic.